Okay, this is Jeff Heaton. I am here at GTC 2020. I'm just grabbing a coffee and waiting for the keynote address to speak. Once they open the doors, I'll try to get a good spot. Okay, yeah, so this is 2020, COVID. I'm attending GTC virtually, but that's okay. No need to call the ambulance. This is going to be a great conference. I can view it all right here on my Lenovo P53 with my trusty sidekick Hickory here. And we're going to take a look at all of the presentations. I'm going to go through this week and show you my schedule. You can see it here. What I'm going to do is present a series of three presentations where I do some of the code behind these. This channel is mostly focused on coding, so I want to show you some of the cool technology. I'll refer first on the GTC keynote, which is what I'm about to see here. Then let's look at some of the sessions that I'll be going to. So there's Rapids, which is really, really cool. This is a end-to-end -end framework that lets you do the data prep, machine learning, and other things completely in the GPU. Now we're gonna do this on a ThinkPad P53 that has Linux pre-installed on it. That is a requirement for Rapids. Then we're going to look at accelerating computer vision. I might not do a code example of that. We'll see what, what that really presents. And then all things Jetson. I'm also looking at bringing AI to DIY, do it yourself. Jetson looks really cool. I might actually buy one of these. This is sort of like a NVIDIA Raspberry Pi, sort of. So it's like a Raspberry Pi, except highly powerful sort of edge GPU capabilities in it. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you, has, have any of you worked with Jetson? Do you wanna let me know in the comments? I really like DIY projects. How many of you guys remember my JavaScript clock? This is actually a Raspberry Pi projecting to a LCD screen. I wrote this all in Node.js and JavaScript. It is essentially running my Merge Live cellular automation behind it and displaying weather information, my social media stats, and various time zones that I frequently need to take meetings in so I can keep track of that. Basically, I just keep modifying this clock so that it shows me the sort of information that I need. Imagine doing this kind of thing, though, with deep learning and a GPU. That's what Jetson should provide. So let me give you some of my impressions from the 2020 keynote. First of all, the keynote is available on YouTube, completely free. You don't need to be registered for the conference or anything. Highly suggest that you watch that. If you just want a whirlwind tour of where GPU and in particular where deep learning and AI is currently at, at the state of the art. It's great. So there's a link in the description there. These were the parts of it. The CEO of NVIDIA broadcast from his kitchen area, which is a, a common area that he's been using to broadcast some of these on just the coming age of AI, that really we are there in terms of AI is becoming mainstream. I remember when I was in undergraduate school, AI was one of these cool technologies that you had a class or two on and it looked really awesome, but you would never actually get a job doing that unless you got some very cool job in NASA or something such as that. Part two was on the NVIDIA Omniverse. Omniverse is awesome. All these games that are very immersive like Second Life and World of Warcraft and others. I'm not much of a gamer, so I'm kind of grasping here, but it's a common platform that unifies assets from these games so that you can Enter the metaverse, finally. The promise of Snow Crash, probably finally here, where people will be spending time in here. And it's interesting, some other parts of the video, they talked about training self-driving cars in virtual worlds versus the real world. And the computer behind the car can't necessarily tell if they're in the real world or the virtual world. There may come a day when we humans are like those 
those cars, and wouldn't that be fun? AI for drug discovery was fascinating, especially how timely with COVID. Truly, just to end, I mean, what opportunity to end some suffering for the world, to be able to deal with the drug discovery, and additional, there's so much genomic information now that uh, sequencing is so inexpensive, being able to deal with that massive amount of data. Accelerated AI inference, this is very fascinating. Things like the Jetson, which I find very interesting, essentially a GPU-enabled edge device on, on a card, like a Raspberry Pi. You train these neural networks in large data centers, but then you deploy them onto edge devices that don't have nearly as much computational power. They made some analogies to the compiler of the new generation AI software being compiled and then being ran on the edge devices. And then Bluefield and the data center infrastructure on a chip. There's a new game in town called the DPU, which is the Data Processing Unit. Uh, more on that in a moment. So this was just the, the parts of the CEO's presentation. You can see each of these parts on YouTube for free, and I have the links below. Really, the overall theme here was the GPU is now mainstream, not just data science, but it's an integral part of cloud computing. GPU workloads are now eclipsing CPU workloads, or at least surpassing them. NVIDIA is heavily, heavily involved in this area. They released new, 80 new NVIDIA SDKs, and there's already considerable number out there. This is amazing to me. There's 1,800 CUDA GPU accelerated applications. Those used to be so few and far between. 6,500 startup companies using these technologies, and as far as NVIDIA developers, there's two point. 3 million developers and 600K joined just last year. And these are some of the key technologies, at least the ones that I was interested in. And therefore you'll probably be seeing videos on this channel from. And definitely let me know in the comments, which of these are you the most interested in? Would you like to see maybe some coverage of from me? But one is the DPU, the data processing unit, as if GPUs, TPUs, and CPUs were not enough. And this is not replacing any of those others. And TPUs and CPUs, those are just kind of the Google versus the NVIDIA take on high performance computing. And then CPUs runs, runs the host, but DPU, this is in some ways replacing the NIC card, meaning it has high bandwidth communication between hosts, getting data onboarded into the machine as fast as possible in an encrypted, secure way, also performing some of the initial transformations on that data in a chip set that is specifically designed to handle that. That's key to a lot of these things, is minimizing that data transfer. You'll have the software design data center. This is where you don't have to physically move devices around and install GPUs, TPUs, FPGA, all these kind of th hardware technologies. You can just truly have a generic hardware data center and be able to reconfigure it without ever even stepping foot in it and configuring systems to be able to take advantage of these amazing technologies. Rapids and Dask. I've signed up for a couple of presentations on this. I have underused these. I will definitely say that. They look very, very powerful and something that I think will make their way into pretty much all mainstream data science. You can now use strings. It's not just the, the numeric values that you would be pushing off to the GPU. There's extreme natural language processing. They use in Rapids the off-the-shelf Python libraries that you would use already, like scikit-learn, random forests, XGBoost. They're heavily, NVIDIA is heavily involved with the XGBoost community. Rapids has been compared to like the leap from Hadoop to Spark. Rapids lets you really keep all this data in the GPU memory rather than transferring it back and forth to the host, which really data transfer just kills you in these kind of applications and you need to minimize it. But if you're dealing with different libraries like XGBoost versus scikit-learn and all these, you 
I've written the code many times myself that has to transform the data into ways that each of these libraries needs to see it and then upload it to the GPU and take it back from the GPU, process it on the CPU, back up to the GPU. Rapids lets you use all the tools that you're familiar with and be able to not have to spend all your time transferring it. And Dask is a Python extension that, that basically lets you use a lot of this Python pandas type code that you've worked with before to parallelize it without putting any parallelization already in your code. So long as you're using like apply type functions over just looping at the data and going for it, you'll get some tremendous speed boost. Jetson looks really cool, an edge device, and I saw that they have now a Jetson in the $50 range, so look out Raspberry Pi. I'm a big fan of Raspberry Pi, but I'm, I'm gonna definitely take a look at Jetson. What I'll be particularly interested in Jetson is what do the add-ons to this look like in terms of, say, against a Raspberry Pi. Because the Raspberry Pi, I've built several projects, you just saw one of them, where I attach LCD screens and touch and all this kind of thing. Video calls, NVIDIA is doing some amazing things in video calls. And I mean, they showed a child pounding on a toy key, piano keyboard behind the parent who was trying to do a video call and just filters it right out. They can use AI GAN type technology to really compress those video calls so that it's not sending through your face constantly and even make it so that you're looking at the camera all the time, which I know is something something you guys see me do wrong even in my YouTube videos. And then NGC is basically this huge library or zoo of models already available for you. now that's available in AWS and GCP. So I am going to be doing some videos related to this conference. They'll probably run through this week and next week. I don't think I'll get every one of them recorded this week, but I'm going to try to do as many of them as I can. I'm going to do a video on choosing a GPU. There's a conference session that I'm seeing later today where I will hear all about how to choose a GPU for the right uh, the right application, and I'll, I'll summarize and do a video on that. I've got some of my own ideas in there, and I've been meaning on doing a video on that, so this will be a good opportunity. I'm doing an entire session tomorrow on Transformers, so I'll definitely be covering Transformers. This is an area of NLP that I have not gone that deep on, but I'm quite interested. Neural network explainability, always peering into the black box is important. This is a huge thing that I deal with in my day job as a vice president of data science. We insurance companies are just not willing to trust the, the judgments of these AI systems without explainability, and Rapids and Dask, like I already talked about. Definitely, you'll see some videos. Do any of these seem particularly interesting? Definitely let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and be sure to subscribe so you see all of these to come.